Hey, I'm Nick Athlon Gamer. Welcome back to Pro Cycling Manager 2020. It's Career Mode Episode 121. It's a good thing that I've already purchased a replacement for my recording software because, well, my current recording software is dying. I haven't had a chance to install it yet. Uh, I tried to install it previously and ran into some complications, spent two days on it, and it's been a busy season. So it's sat waiting for a, a second go round of trying to get it installed and get it working properly. Anyway, I have an Elgato uh, HD Pro, and I'm upgrading to an Elgato 4K Pro. The reason why I tell you this, though, is that, well, it's it's dying. And for the second time in recent uh, weeks, and second time on this series, I believe, I've lost all audio for the game. So I'm re-recording after the fact, and here we are. It's the Mont Ventoux Challenge. And unfortunately, the favorite is supposed to be Rodriguez, but he's on a minus two race day condition. That's not going to help him out too well for this one, but maybe it's Monfantu. He's a good climber. He's got a chance. With minus two, I'm not so sure. Denny Ginn does have a plus five, though. Probably looking a little stronger than Rodriguez at this point, but will that make us a favorite or not? Hard to say. Early on, the other teams certainly think I'm the favorite. Large breakaway, 20 riders, 10-minute lead within about 15 kilometers of the start of the race. So we first sacrificed Gazzoli to limit that gap. He brought it back to five minutes and we, as we got to the base of this time, uh, this climb, Chalet Reynard. Gazzoli's long gone now. He's one of the first ones out the back. No surprise about that. But we're going to have to continue this chase before too long. Jorgensen... Uh, he's fading. He's going out the back. But that leaves me with four riders still at the front. Luckily, some of the other teams have kind of picked up that chase. It's at three and a half minutes now. We're, we're closing it down a little bit. Uh, one thing, and a quick note again, going back to uh, the limitations of what happened re recording this audio. Uh, a, I discovered it late at night as I was doing my editing and rendering for tomorrow's video for as in, you know, as you're watching this the next day. And so re-recording this at night, which is not supposed to be a work time for me. I, I do like to and do enjoy spending time with my wife. I know. Go figure, right? I, I try to keep my work during the day. Anyway, uh, so doing this at night, I've, I've gone ahead and sped up a lot of these clips so they're going to be playing at a faster time than what i actually played it at as i was recording all right now continuing on johnson is now going to move to the front because the other teams they've backed off a bit they're not going very quick we are near the top and we have a large peloton 107 riders i want to take the strength of my climbers my four guys that we have left and break this peloton up a little bit take away some of the support of other teams and you can see we're instantly doing that as a number of riders have gone out the back. Laporte, one of those. Ochoa, Kwiatkowski. But there's some names that have gone out the back. There's Rainsford, but that's the sprinter Rainsford, not our former teammate. And we're down to 85. So we, we did a decent job. Did not lose any of my four remaining guys, though Millar very much on the edge. And Johnson has used up a lot of energy. But looking at the gap, three and a half minutes, we can't afford to let up. We really, really cannot afford to let up. And speaking of not being able to let up, if we keep the pressure on, a lot of our riders will not recover. But Johnson is now out of energy. Millar does not have enough to really pick up the chase, so he stays on 99. The other teams aren't really picking it up, so the gap's going to open back up a little bit. And we're getting a little recovery in some of the guys. Millar fairly recovered as we approach the Montfantu climb. Johnson, definitely not. Uh, we're going to call it day done for him as some of the other teams finally decide to help with the pursuit. We're at 345. More recovery than I was hoping. 16 riders off the front, 14 in the main group. That is three and a half minutes up the road. And instantly, again, if we have a competitive climber or two, it's going to have to be a difficult climb to eliminate the other riders. So Johnson, yeah, I tried. <laughs> I tried to go. The other teams are actually going harder. So that didn't work out. Uh, we've got Rodriguez, Millar, and Ginn now. So Millar, his turn. 
And you can see out of 79, he's still not even quite the main guy. I'm trying to back off. I don't want to waste too much energy, but we take over. Pacing out of 77 early. 13K to go on this 19-kilometer, 1900-meter climb up Mount Vontu. It's pretty steep. And it's pretty relentless. All right, so Millar running out of energy just as we hit the 10K banner, and we haven't even caught the breakaway. Peloton back down to 85. The front riders are split. There's now just three guys that are pulling away, and we are near to the rest, but we're already having to use Rodriguez from the 10K mark. You can see we're flying past the breakaway. Now there's a single rider all left off the front, and we're down to 10 in the peloton. Rodriguez has ridden most of these guys off, but with 4K left to go, that's it. He's out of energy. He's got us down to the final six. Now the final five. He's riding a 99 with no tempo left. 2K to go. Approaching the end. Gin is in the perfect position, but he does not have much energy. We've got Yates, Sleen, O'Connor, Guillaume Martin with us. Can we hang on? Nobody's going to catch us. Here's Gin. We're going to accelerate. 79. O'Connor goes. Big mistake there. I tried to click sprint. And I tried to click it at what would have been the exact right spot. I misclicked. I, I was just, my mouse was just, just above the marker. And so I didn't end up clicking sprint. And so I had to pause real quick. Re-click that button and go. By the time I had done that, O'Connor burst past me. He had gone just a little bit beyond me. And that was that. So we, we ended up second. And fifth, uh, good result, not the win. I think we could have won that, but it, it would have been a lot better if Rodriguez even had a zero because then Ginn would have been the one leading him out and Rodriguez would have been fine. But with the uh, minus two, he, he had like a minus four to resistance and his resistance is good, but not great anyway. So way past time here onto what you're seeing. And this is the U.S. National Championships now. Uh, individual time trial, Mishik Smith, the only one with decent time trial rating. Uh, it's 50-50 between time trial and prologue, so he's, what, 73-77, so he's a 75 uh, between the two, which is okay, but it's it's not great. Uh, we're taking a 76 here. Through the first couple sectors, you can see we're 19th, 13th. It's, it's not quite good enough, and the top riders are still coming up. So 1K to go. He's got actually even a little bit of energy. I'm not even going to push it he gets into the top 10 temporarily but by time we get to the end of the riders he's gonna go back mcnulty's got the top time but the top couple guys are getting ready to come here's chad haga and there you go joseph berry the favorite of course he's a 84 82 he won so we move on to uh, it was 19th by the way for for smith or 20th something like that he was just inside the top 20 denny again uk individual time trial he's a pretty good time trialist he does have a plus one it's a longer one so it is full time trial rating so he's a 77 in the discipline it's it's good it's definitely good he should be able to put up a competitive time and through the first checkpoint he's fourth through the second he's got the top time as he crosses but there's like six guys behind him and as they go through he again is going to drop down that order uh, third, fourth, there you go, fourth, 19 seconds off. Second here, so he's lost one second as we come in, now slips to third, so he's one second behind. I was a little bit over. There was no other riders here, so I didn't have anybody to kind of test out what to do, and so I had to go for it uh, from the get-go and kind of guess on, on the effort necessary, and I went at a 76, and 76 was a little hard. If I was 75 throughout steady tempo, I would have rode a little bit better, but I ended up having to back off. I was 74 near the end, and we ran out of energy inside the final kilometer. Lost probably 10 seconds, 15 seconds through that stretch. It was just enough to knock me back into the position I was at the end of the third checkpoint, and ultimately fifth place, just four seconds out of fourth. That was the only difference it would have made. Uh, we were definitely not beating those three guys on the podium. And fourth and fifth, yeah, not much difference. It was a good result. All right, now on to the road races, and it's the U.S. National Championship. I only have four guys left with American Heritage. That's it. 
Telford is the weak man of the bunch. The weak rider. So I sent him forward, but you can see they pursued him immediately. We only got 20 seconds ahead. I'm pushing hard, and they catch up to him. So I couldn't get Telford in the break. I try a second time. They immediately chase it down. So our team, not allowed to be in the break. Kevin Vermark is one of the favorites. Not the favorite, but he's one of the top three favorites for this race. And so with that, a podium, uh, sorry, a breakaway not including us gathers, gets out there. And I immediately put Telford on the front to keep it close. He's got it checked at 2.30. It's nine riders. He alone is keeping it close. That's Smith getting water for us. Still Telford on the front. Energy-wise, he's doing okay, but he's keeping that group in check at two and a half minutes. We're pushing almost halfway through, so things are good. We've we've definitely got it in check. I don't like that I have to sacrifice a rider. There is nobody else, no other rider, no other team willing to commit anyone. I only have four guys. I have one of the smallest teams here. There's at least three to four large American teams with six or seven riders. I've got four. But as we get to 70K, the gap has stretched a little bit. The breakaway sped up, and with nine riders, that's not that hard to do. And in fact, three more riders went off the front to make it six and six. Telford's riding harder, riding faster, but he's only holding the gap at three and a half minutes. And no other team, 40K to go now, no other team participating, no one. So Telford is nearly out of energy, and I'm down to these three guys. And we're already into the last three climbs, and he's only pulled back about 10, 15 seconds. But as we hit that climb, he runs out of energy. Jorgensen goes to the front, starts to try to chase, but it's still 319. Two climbs to go, and no team contributing. But now, McNulty trying to attack. So no help, no support, but they're trying to attack us. So great. Love it. Nice. Thanks a lot. We've brought it back by a minute. It's two and a half now, but how much chasing can Jorgensen do? We're doing a 95. It's 9K to go. We're not going to catch those guys. We've split some riders off the back quite a few, a dozen or so, but the breakaway is still two minutes ahead. We've pulled back a minute and a half. It's not going to be enough. We're almost almost done pulling back McNulty. Jorgensen runs out of energy on to Mishik Smith. Smith going hard, 99, trying to attack. We're still struggling to catch McNulty, who is an excellent climber. And Vermark goes, Vermark goes, and yeah, not only do we not catch the top 12, who hang on by a minute 29, miss out entirely on Palace as well, beating us by about a wheel. Uh, so 14th overall, not a good result. That's it, though. I, I am out of time. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Thanks for tuning in. Short one, sorry. Sped up, sorry how to get this so that you could still get some content next up more national championships and then the tour de france i'm kathleen gabriel thanks for tuning in be sure to hit that like button i'll see you next time have a good one be safe out there and bye for now